This episode is brought to you by freedadcourse.com. You are always one conversation away from changing your life. And the power of hello is something that I subscribe to every single day. And I'm always saying hello to new people everywhere I go. Increasing your opportunity, increasing your connection, and getting access to the solutions to the problems that you are facing, whether you're on active duty or just beginning your veteran transition, or you've been transitioning out for 20 years. On the other side of hello are the solutions that you're looking for. Again, head on over to freedadcourse.com. Get your five-episode audio course to create more connection, create more friendships, and get back to living the life that you're trying to design. Dory 1, this is Fire Team Delta. Dad's coming home. Welcome to the Military Veteran Dad Podcast, where it is our mission to bring every dad home. I am your host, Ben Colloy. I'm a United States Marine veteran, husband, and a father. We will bring authentic conversations to inspire action in your life so we can close the gap between the dad you are today and the dad you want to be tomorrow. This is the Military Veteran Dad Podcast. Today on the show, we have Tony Buchanan. He's served three years in the Army in the Mechanized Infantry Unit from 1997 to 2000. He currently is a police officer in Joshua, Texas, just outside of Fort Worth. He is married and has four kids ages of 21, 16, 12, and 8. Tony, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. Describe a little bit what your family looks like now and any gaps into that intro that I didn't include. Uh, The only thing you're missing there is my 21-year-old has a 13-month-old daughter so i am a grandfather i didn't i don't i think i guess i did remember maybe hearing about that through our connections or our common connection yeah it's a it, it's kind of new we uh i think we met her when she was about 11 months old we all all were surprised with hey here's a granddaughter so it's, it's all new right now what does it mean for you to come home tony coming home i mean it means Depends on where I'm at in my life. If I was in high school and you asked me that, coming home means coming home before my curfew so my parents didn't tear into my butt or I get grounded. In college, coming home meant I was on spring break or, or school break or something. In the military, coming home meant basically I was, I was finished with my tour of duty. I was done. ETS, I was out of the military, came home. Police career, coming home every day. It means a whole lot different now. I mean, my wife says, hey, make sure you come home today. And then, you know, if she watches the news and something bad happens, it, you know, it means a lot more now whenever someone says come home. And I can imagine for you the, uh, the realism of being a police officer and everything that is on the news about police officers these days and just that real life that every day could be that day you walk away from it all and you're not, you don't come home. Oh, yeah, there's been there's been some – some times where she's there's been some things going on in the news and she has said that to me when I left in the morning hey come home and you know it's, it's like wow you, you know you know you never really said it to me but you know she's watched the news and seen some things and something's hit her she's like hey you know come home I'll see you tonight and you know it hits you were, were you were you dating your wife when you served or did you meet her after no I met her after I met her after I got out of the army and uh I was about halfway through college. Is there, I can't imagine that coming home as a police officer comes naturally. Is there anything that you've done intentionally to, to recognize that or to work through it on both sides, that it's an issue for you as well as it is for her? Uh, I mean, as far as of my issues, I've got, I was, I mean, before I got to Joshua, which is a very small country town where now I work behind a desk and put people in jail with a pencil. But before that, I was in Dallas and, you know, it, that was, that's a huge place to work. And there's a lot of bad stuff that goes on there. And it was a, a fun career and I was chasing all the fun and doing all the fun stuff. And, <laughs> and I would have to come home and, you know, my wife said, Hey, how was work today? Oh, it was all right. You know, wrote a couple of tickets, took a guy to jail. That was it. You know, tried to tried to keep her out of the loop as Probably much as I could. Downplayed a little bit. Yeah, but but then you know, on on the other hand, you you do that, and you try to internalize and hold all this stuff in, and you don't have a 
a sounding board, I guess, to release this stuff in. I release this stuff that you see day in and day out. It that that got to the point where I was like, ah, I kind of had to find a nice balance. Yeah. To kind of let her in on some things, but then not let her have all of it. And we often hear about military veteran dads coming home from war or even just a deployment or even just being serving their, their four years. But for you coming home as a daily event that is a little bit different, like you can see something every day and have to learn how to deal with it when you walk in the door. For most veterans, it's they, learn, they have something happen to them in war that they have to then deal with. And it's not necessarily a constant. They're living it in their mind again, but it's not like a reminder vividly. Like there's not new memories being made every day of – man, this is a whole big memory I got to deal with and I barely got yesterday's dealt with and I got a new one today. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's one of the things that these these new officers have to, one of the things they have to tackle and they have, they have to come to grips with and it's something that can make or break your career. Any advice for other police officers out there? or even a veteran that may also be working through the, those demons of what they've seen or what they dealt with? Uh, just if you can find a good person to talk to, that's not there to judge you or compare stories back and forth. Oh, you know, Oh, you did this, listen to this story and just sit there just to let you get it out, get it off your chest and just hear it and then move on. If you, you can find a good person like that, that that's that's gold hang on to that. that that'd be my my best advice find someone that you can just talk to about things our common connection is the dad's edge alliance that we're both part of as a collective mastermind is that what where you've kind of became attracted to the idea where you had that sounding board or just that group of men to talk to yeah i have you know i've got my police group and we we discuss our police things but i didn't have that good tribe of men to surround myself with to, you know, 10x my marriage, 10x my, you know, being a father. And I, you know, the police guys, we talk about these type of things. And I didn't have the group over here to talk about, man, I came home today and my kids were just out of control. My wife was bothering me. How do you deal with that? You know, we don't, we don't talk about those type of things. Mm -hmm. So I needed a, I needed a good tribe of men to jump into and get surrounded with so I could you know, I could try to level up my game as a father and a husband. And I can imagine if they are talking about it, they're probably not talking it in a positive way. They're probably maybe in a not so nice derogatory way as well, which doesn't help your mentality as well when you're reinforcing uh, beliefs in your head that you know aren't true, but by people around you saying some of the similar things, it can easily open the wrong door in your marriage and keep us in the dark, a dark spot. Totally, totally can. I mean, being a police officer is like a magnet for women. You can be the ugliest person <laughs> in the world, but you have a uniform. I mean, just like in the military, you have a uniform and a badge on, women are going to flock to you. And if you don't have that tribe of men to surround yourself with, say, hey, you know, this isn't what I'm about, you can very easily get sucked into that lifestyle. And next thing you know, you, you know, it's, it's not where you want to be and your life sucks. And you're probably not even per a person you recognize anymore either. You've probably lost definitely. your identity because you're molding to the other identities around you. Definitely. Definitely. You see a lot of that. I'm a big uh, believer that kids spell love T I M E. What are some simple time hacks that you do to connect with your kids that aren't expensive, but your kids remember them years later and your kids are older. So I'm sure it's a little bit more challenging. <laughs> no, I mean, every morning I started doing this about five, five, six months ago. Every morning I'll wake my kids up and I'm always waking them up. You know, you're a leader today. You're a champion. You're a lion. Get up. Let's be champions today. Let's go out. Just motivation, getting them up, waking them up. But right before I kick them, kick them off into the car, my wife takes them to school we sit down, I pull out a dollar and I'm like, who was the wake up champion today? You know, who was the one that, that woke up and didn't have any issues and, and was on time and got their shoes on and got their teeth brushed and got everybody together. And I, you know, I give them a dollar and say, Hey, Brooklyn, that's my oldest daughter. You was the wake up champion today. Here's a dollar. And it's just, they look, if I miss it, man, the kids are like, Hey, 
who's the wake up champion today? That's that's something just just a little something to to connect with them in the morning before they leave to go to school. You probably won't realize what seeds you're planting in their personality till much later in life, but I can imagine, especially because your kids are in that high school teenage, just everybody's kind of picking, you're trying to elevate your social status, like hearing the words champion daily or for anybody and having that feeling at least uh, consistently. I can only imagine that what that does to your psyche because I can't remember ever hearing the words being a champion in high school. And um, I'm sure some social pressure is taken off when they already feel like they're a champion in their dad's eyes before they even enter school and yeah. enter the battle of uh, being popular. I can't who I can't remember what podcast I heard it on. Somebody, man, he was a, a Navy SEAL. Now he does like uh, – wingsuit jumping i can't remember his name but it he was he was talking to somebody and he was like you know i, I tell my kids every day before they, they get out of the car to go to school hey be a leader today do something to be a leader today and i was man that really resonated with me i thought you know what i'm gonna start telling my kids every day be a champion be a leader you know do something nice for somebody or ask them hey well, what, what's a goal for you today what's one thing you want to do today that's a goal you know just see what they got to say my oldest is six years old, and I've been teaching her a lesson that I learned from a uh, speech I heard in Toastmasters that uh, to be the rainbow to someone's storm. That sto uh, rainbows only show up uh, after a storm, and essentially the pot of gold at the end of a rainbow is is someone else coming into your life and being that pot of gold that you will never find your own pot of gold. So I've been explaining to my daughter at school to be kind, which is something that they understand the word, but they don't think they really always understand the the actions but for somehow just teaching her to like give rainbows away and uh be the rainbow when someone needs it that has translated to something that she's understood and we talk about it multiple times a week whether she gave a double rainbow away or just a single rainbow but being those kids that got that look no one's playing with them i'm like go be a rainbow to them they need someone to to pick them up be a friend that they that they need right there and it's a similar idea but uh my six-year-old, she's really resonated with the idea of uh, giving away rainbows during the day. That's perfect. What do you want your kids to remember about you when they're 30? They're at a bar talking about their dad. What do you wish that or hope that they say? Man, I hope that they can look back and say, you know what? Through thick and thin, good times and bad times, my dad was motivated. He was in inspirational. You know, he was he always had something to look to the good side of something, you know, and was always motivated. Even the worst, worst times in the world, he would still look up and say, hey, you know what? I'm a lion. I'm going to be a leader today. Something. He, he, didn't, he didn't let things get him down. I hope they can remember that. Do they have any uh, realization of what you face on a daily basis and what you come home with? Or have you, have you kind of kept them out of that? Uh, I think my – I mean, my oldest son, who's – 21 and yeah he I mean, he does my youngest or my oldest daughter is 16 she's what she can see on the news and if she'll ask you know if she asks questions but I, yeah. yeah i'll tell them stories of you know funny arrests and stuff like that hey you know we arrested a guy today he was naked blah blah you know whatever something funny but if it's something that's just you don't want them to the bad part of society you don't want the kids to see now i don't think they, they really don't understand that because i can imagine that once they start seeing the other side of the world where there is evil out there that reflecting on how you showed up in their life they're going to see the other side of the coin and probably admire that you were always the shiny side i would hope so I, i'll tell my i tell my oldest daughter and I'm starting to tell my youngest daughter now because they're getting to the ages where they want to go to the mall and hang out with their friends and stuff. And I'll, I'll sit down and have like a five, 10 minute conversation. Babe, if something doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. Grab the nearest adult and just say, Hey, did, whatever it is, this is bothering me. That this doesn't feel right. Can you help me out? And it's gotten to the point now where my daughter, I'll start telling her, I know dad, I know dad. If it doesn't feel right, it's not right. Find somebody and tell them. <laughs> I'm like, good, baby, good. You're hearing me. Just just trying to let them know that, you know, there are bad things out there, but not trying to ruin her day. 
not yeah. let her go to the mall and have a good time, but you know, just to be aware that things are out there. Did you ever suffer from being a helicopter parent because you knew what world was out there and you were trying to protect them? No, because I, I didn't get into law enforcement until my oldest son was about about 10 or 11. So I kind of had him, he was 10 or 11, you know, before I got into it and started seeing everything. So I, I don't think I was too much of a helicopter parent. Did you struggle with like making letting him fail? And my my first son, yes, I did, I, and I'm, I mean, we're definitely paying for that now. But <laughs> yeah, I was, I mean, I was always there for him. I was his football coach. I was whatever sport he was doing. I was his coach. Anything he was doing, I was always there with him, and you know, try to catch him before he fell. And now it's, you know, I don't he's having issues with not being able to fail because I was always there to catch him. And now he's like, Oh man, I'm almost an adult. And I, I, I've really failed in that aspect of raising him, having my first son and being a single parent. I, I, I failed in that aspect. I'm really trying to, trying to figure out ways to, to fix that right now. Is there anything looking back that you'd like to send a message out there for other dads that might resonate with that? You know, it, it's going to be tough, but let them bump up against, against the guardrails, man. Don't, don't take them and no, 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 baby, get back over here. You know, stay away from that. Let, let them taste that, you know, failure every once in a while. Let them, let them touch it when they're young. So they don't, when they're older, it's not, doesn't have such a huge impact, but when they're younger, man, let them, let them have some failures and see what it's like because they get older. My, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with it now. With my oldest son, he, uh, kind of, I mean, I don't want to say like an entitlement attitude, but he's kind of, he just does, doesn't know how to fail and he's never had to really, we are, you know, experience that. So it's, it's kind of, it's difficult now trying to watch him parent and, and, and where my failure was and where I'm going to see it in him also with her, his youngest daughter. And hopefully I can verbalize that to him somehow to where it resonates with him and he doesn't do the same. I can imagine as a new dad being 21 years old, that, when you have a, your heart is li literally living outside your body. And if you grew up not knowing where the edges were, I could easily see a, like a, almost a panic in my head of like, you don't know where you can fail with your child or where you can fail or where you, it's okay not to and where to let them fail because you never saw the edges yourself. I could see that being right. a big handicap. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm hoping I can, redirect him <laughs> i guess would be the best word yeah. <laughs> just kind of help him guide himself along right now man i i just want nothing but the best for him probably the one thing that that if you said he was a single dad like he, he raises your granddaughter well he's no he's uh she's 13 months now so it's only been about four or five months that he was he was living in Seattle. Him, you know, him and her friend was like, you know what, we're gonna go to Seattle. Let's see what life has to offer us. And they often went. And next thing you know, he's getting calls. Hey, I, I'm uh, I had a baby. She's a year old. And he's like, what? A year old? So he drops everything, comes back home, and we're still going through the process of sorting out custody and everything. Actually, we have a custody hearing tuesday and so it, it's still all real new right now yeah and it and so we're, we're still brand new with it but it, yeah it, it's probably it's, just um, keeping him talking is probably the one thing that uh if you're if you're learning the way of man in the normal media society of today talking isn't one that's encouraged but in a world where you're scared to death of what's going to happen talking is probably the one thing you can be as a dad just making sure he knows you're always there to, to not judge and just be listening yeah i think i mean that's that's where i need to that's where i need to 
with him, with my oldest son to level up is me and him are our conversations. Yeah, you we, gotta move past we, the weather in the sports. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We went through a very, very, very rough patch for about for about a year. And it's there's it's still it's still tender and it's still kind of an open wound with me and him and, and uh my wife. And so we're still we're trying to trying to all of this there's a lot right now where me and him and my wife are still trying to heal these wounds that we had for this year long debacle that we had but now there's a granddaughter and he has a daughter and so on one hand I just want to hold both of them and just love them and you know give them the world but then on one hand you know I still haven't healed from these wounds that he all these terrible things that he did for a year so mm-hmm. I, that's i think i need to just you know be the bigger person put that stuff aside and just start you know opening up more conversations with him again so i so i don't fail him again like i did when he was little yeah because one thing you won't regret 10 years from now is that you held on to that grudge definitely definitely you won't be like man i'm so glad i held on to that 10 years from now (laughs) yeah man look how good i was how strong i was (laughs) i stood my ground and look where i am yeah i know that's just that's just one of those things just you know that's the right thing to do just like losing my patience with my youngest son i know i know with all my heart and mind that that's the worst thing to do but man there's just some days you just you just just lose your patience and then you look back on it you're like that was the stupidest thing what is my problem and all you can hope for is you know be better tomorrow so that that's what i hope for i find in those moments the one thing that helps is that when i talk my daughter in with my oldest uh if i did do something like that or lost my cool i'll always apologize and say that that wasn't how i wanted to be and hopefully modeled to her that you can make mistakes and move past them as long as you forgive yourself and ask for forgiveness from others um, that you don't have to hold on to those or don't have to try to hide or be better because kids see it. And by not acknowledging it, you're teaching them a lesson. I'm not even sure what you label it as, but I'm sure subconsciously there's some lesson there when you don't openly say that daddy doesn't always get it right. Yeah. That's, that's one of the, one of the things I've taken away from the dad edge alliance, dad's edge alliance is, Hey, you know what? I'm learning every day. And so I got to tell, you know, if I make a mistake, tell my daughters, Hey, I'm learning every day. I'm sorry. That wasn't the right way to handle it. But now I think we both see that there's a better way I could have handled that. So let's try, let me try to handle it a better way if this comes up again. And I apologize for that. You know, that's, that's one thing I've, I've really, learned and grabbed onto i don't remember who had it in the group but i remember uh i often tell my daughter you know how you're figuring out six years old well daddy's still trying to figure out how to be 34 (laughs) exactly yeah (laughs) and daddy's trying to figure out how to be a daddy to a six-year-old i've never been that i'm learning every day every day there's a new adventure just something that i didn't know yesterday (laughs) and just like you're figuring out how to work through all your emotions i'm learning how to figure out and work through all this that's true i can't yeah i remember somebody saying that what is the bigger, biggest difference between the person you are today versus that Tony that got out of the army? What do you think your biggest growth area or just general difference? Right now, back then I got out of the army and I was just, I mean, I hate to use all of this, this cliche, cliche word, but just kind of in the drift. I was just, Hey, I'm out of the army. I'm finishing college what's the next step in life? Oh, okay. I get a job. I get married. We have more kids just, you know, yeah. The default floating. transition plan. Yeah. And, and just one day I just kind of woke up and was like, you know what? I love my life, but I know it can be 10 times better. How do I, what do I need to do to, to get there? And so I just kind of started looking around and, and one another, another thing that really stuck with me is, I mean, how do, they, how do they say it? You are the representation or whatever of the five people you surround yourself with or something like that. You are the average of the five closest people. There you go. Yeah. And so, and I, I was like, well, you know, 
I've surrounded myself with a bunch of great, you know, police, and I'm really, I'm really good at being police. But that's not all there is. That's that's not my identity. I've also got a wife and four kids. How do I surround myself yeah. with a bunch of great guys so I can, you know, be great over here? The lucky, kinda, you're lucky your legacy will let the police officer will be a plaque on the wall after you're done. Yeah, definitely. Or, <laughs> and, you know, in my, you know, pension, whatever that's going to be <laughs> <laughs> monthly, that's, that's it. Yeah. And some cool stories that me and, you know, five, ten other people will know, and that's it. But, and yeah, with these kids and my wife, you know, I, that's going to lead on. They're going to, they're going to grow up and have kids and whatever I seeds I planted in them, they're going to, you know, give on to the next generation. And I hope that whatever I, you know, sowed in them was something good that they can pass on. I think I might have an idea of this, but what do you think your seeds or family legacy do you want to be? What do you want them to be remembered for if, when someone describes a Buchanan? Yeah. You know that we, we're leaders and just motivated and champions and, and just that if you see something, stand up and say something. If, if, you know, if something's wrong, say, Hey, that's wrong. Just be a, be a leader and, and, and do what's right when no one's looking. I hope people can say that about me and my family. And I can imagine being a police officer that the general natural of everyone deserves protecting. Definitely. Definitely do. What advice would you give for a dad looking to come home to their marriage? Put in the work. I mean, do what's hard now. So later on your life is easy. I mean, and I don't mean it as, you know, make your wife happy so tomorrow you can go hunting with the, your buddies or whatever. But, you know, marriage is just like everything else, man. It's work. And put your part into it just because you told this beautiful woman of yours that you love her and you would be there for her day in, day out. Just because you told her that, don't put something, you know, don't say, hey, you know what, I'm going to be good today so tomorrow she can do good for me. No, man, you took this woman to be your wife. You just do the work and don't expect anything back. And and I think you'll be good to go. I can imagine that as a police officer, it's very easy to get your identity wrapped up in the uniform. Do police officers struggle with having an individual identity that, cause I can imagine if your identity is a police officer, then you struggle to even stand alone without your, your identity, which it maybe makes you a workaholic sometimes probably. Yeah. I mean, you definitely see some of those guys that clock out, but they still got, you know, their police jacket on their police. They got their yeah. badge poked out on their belt, and their gun sticking out. So everybody can see and everyone realizes, Oh, I guess you're, you know, police off duty right now, huh? And yeah, and and if you let that be your identity, man, then it's it's that's all you're wrapped up in. Just like you said, after you leave, what are you gonna have? A yeah, pension? and what is she gonna love? Yeah, and then you know, your wife. That's not her identity. She, she didn't marry the loved you uniform, <laughs> right? She may have definitely. started dating you or gotten your number because you were in the uniform, according to <laughs> Definitely. But, but there was something uh, else there. Was something that else saw. below the uniform, below those yeah, layers. They, yeah, definitely something else that, that they saw. What is a resource or a book you would recommend to other military veteran dads and why? I just got finished with David Goggins' Can't Hurt Me and just his mentality of – I mean, just kind of like what the title says, you can't hurt me and he can overcome anything mentally was, it was a great listen. And it's just something that I hope I can pass on to my kids. You know, if, if you can beat something mentally, you, you know, your body will follow and you can beat it. Just kind, kind of like running. Nobody likes running and your, your body's going to, or your mind's going to give up way before your body does. If you just keep telling yourself, you know what? 
I can make it to that next stoplight. And you get there, you know what? That other stoplight down there looks pretty close. I can make it there. You just keep telling yourself that you can do it. Then, you you know, you'll get there a lot further. So if you don't give up mentally, you're going to get a lot farther in life. I find that true in the gym that the best way to beat a crappy mindset is to, to beat it up physically, either through just pushing weights or rowing machine is the classic one where I'll give up on myself 10 times before I hit the target that I want to hit and I just <laughs> yeah. keep pushing through. Oddly enough, I kind of forgotten about it till recently, but uh, back in boot camp, I had these index cards and these index cards were uh, words of affirmation before I even knew what words of affirmation were. And one of them was nothing lasts forever. So like if I was getting IT, we were doing something that really sucked in the moment, I would just remind myself in 10 minutes from now, we're going to be marching somewhere and we're going to be doing something completely different. It won't last forever. Just push through. It will end. Cause I think before that my mentality was like, whatever I feel now is like a infinite feeling that will, won't end. And I had to probably the first like initial mindset shift of, Whatever you're feeling and going through now is temporary. Whatever that feeling is, you just push through it, and there is another side where you don't feel that anymore. Right. I just explained something like that to my oldest daughter. She, her, her and her boyfriend just broke up, and they've been dating for almost so almost five months, I think. So in you know, 15, 16-year-old time, that's a 20-year relationship. Yes. <laughs> and she was just devastated. I, I just had to tell her. You know, babe, right now it, it does suck and it's terrible. And it's okay for you to feel that way. It's okay for you to be upset and be sad. But in a week from now, it's going to be totally different. So let's, you know, let's, let's have our emotions right now. But then let's, you know, pick ourselves up and move on. And, and I'm hoping she heard that because, you know, she had a great time. She had her, her 16th birthday party last night and she was having a great time. So I'm hoping, hoping she heard some of that. Reminds me of just something as I've learned through podcasting and blogging that when you find something or when you encounter something in the universe that you eventually come to the conclusion it's not right for you. Learning what you stand against is more powerful than what you stand for and applies. Really, it's harder in relationships, but theoretically every relationship you learn more and more what you don't like to then understand where you, when you do get that, it's that much more of a feeling that you're like, this is it. That's definitely that. That's a good way. Uh, some good advice to give people. What is the parting piece of advice you want to leave for military veteran dads? Come home. Don't get stuck in just, just you know. Okay, wake up eight a.m., go to the gym, go to work, come home, do it again tomorrow. You know, get out there and and make. No one's going to hand you a great life. You got to get out there and make it. And so get out there and find your little small piece of the world and make it you yourself, make it great. Do something to impact your little small section of the world, you know, help somebody out, you know, do something, just, just be great. Cause no one's going to hand it to you. You got to go out there and make it great on your own. I think it was a few years back reminds me of a piece of advice I gave myself that in order to love life, you have to live life. And if you're not living, then the road to love won't happen. And going through the routine is not living life. That is just providing. Yeah, that's, that is exactly what it is. Providing what you need to get through that day. So you can get up tomorrow and get through that day. And that's just not living. And life's about making, I love Miss Frizzle's advice on life that she always, it's, it misses most adults when they hear it, but I have always repeated that Miss Frizzle always says the best advice is just to get messy and make mistakes. That that's, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and that's the easiest way to, that like some of the best moments where you're, you're like, you feel like you're alive is either you did something fearful or you did something scary or you made a mistake, but like, standing on that edge of whatever, maybe even with your older son, what you held them back from was like that feeling of alive when you did fit, fail or when you almost failed, but you actually did it and you conquered it and you walked through it or. Yeah. Just get out there and get messy in life and, and make it, make it great for yourself. Well, Tony, this, I've thoroughly enjoyed this interview. It was really good. And I've always enjoyed talking with you in our weekly mastermind calls. So I'm glad we got to 
do your first podcast interview and tell your side of the story. Thank you, sir. I enjoyed it myself. That's a wrap. And thank you for listening to today's show, and I really hope you enjoyed it. The lifeblood of any new podcast are the reviews. If you haven't reviewed the podcast yet on iTunes, I would really appreciate it, and you will help us get the message out to even more military veteran dads. As John Maxwell says, if there is hope in the future, there is power in the present. Dads, it's time to come home.